Well, Senator Bernie Sanders has won the New Hampshire primary. He won nearly 26% of the vote yesterday. Moderate candidates Pete Buttigieg and Senator Amy Klobuchar rounded out the top three. CBS News political reporter Caitlin Huey Burns is in Manchester and joins me now. So, Caitlin, some Democrats feel that Bernie Sanders is just too far left. He's had a strong chance of winning potentially the popular vote, even if he doesn't secure most delegates. Will the party back him? Is he concerned about that at this point? Hi, Rena. Uh, well, look, Bernie Sanders had a good night last night. He won New Hampshire. That was the plan going into this. He had uh, built upon a successful ground game that he started in 2016, was able to carry that over. Remember, in the 2016 primary, he won uh, overwhelmingly here, beat Hillary Clinton by about 20 points. Uh, last night, he was successful in, in taking home delegates. But the margin between him and Pete Buttigieg, who had been surging in recent days following uh, that photo finish in Iowa where Pete Buttigieg led in the delegate count uh, really does raise some questions about uh, Bernie Sanders moving forward. Yes, he was successful here in New Hampshire, but the key for him has always been to uh, expand on his base of support. His base of support is very strong. We've seen voters remain very loyal to him after supporting him last time around, uh, but can he evolve? Uh, can he uh, expand that base? We'll see when the campaign heads west to Nevada next week. Uh, I think it will uh, another factor con to consider is that when you tally up just the kind of the raw votes for mm -hmm. uh, Pete Buttigieg and Amy Klobuchar uh, that and 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 some others that is more than um, what um, Bernie Sanders was getting. So as we're kind of discussing whether it's the, the liberal wing of the party, the progressive wing, or the more moderate centrist wing, if you're looking at the results in here, here in New Hampshire, uh, I think you tally up um, Bernie, uh, uh, Pete Buttigieg and um, Amy Klobuchar and uh, have, have some challenges for Bernie Sanders going ahead. You know, Nevada's culinary union, it's hugely influential in the state's upcoming caucuses. Yeah. They're criticizing Bernie Sanders' Medicare for All plan. Do you think that could hurt him on February 22nd? That's right. That is a hugely influential union, and unions have been uh, really critical for the Democratic Party. Bernie Sanders has a strong organization in Nevada. He has been building it out. He's uh, doing well among Latino voters, who, of course, are a critical constituency there. Uh, but the issue of health care is something that will be an issue to watch there in Nevada, especially as it pertains to unions. You've heard from Joe Biden and Pete Buttigieg to some extent talking about the way in which Medicare for All, uh, a proposal like Bernie Sanders has, might um, threaten some union contracts uh, when it relates to health care. So look for those lines of attack uh, coming out, health care to be a top issue of concern in Nevada. So Andrew Yang and Senator Michael Bennett dropped out last night. Deval Patrick dropped out today. You've got this field of candidates that's sort of winnowing down. Finally, Caitlin, you know, which candidates do you think could benefit yeah. from the folks getting out of the race at this point? You know, going into this, New Hampshire voters said that they wanted to be decisive, uh, and we're seeing that. You saw three candidates drop out over the past 24 hours, and the field is actually winnowing. We've been waiting for this for a while now. We still have, I think, about seven or eight candidates left in this race. Uh, but I think this is a moment in the campaign where a lot of these underdogs were kind of looking at New Hampshire because it's a small state. It's a retail politics-heavy state. You can go around here uh, in a couple of hours and meet a lot of candidates. Candidates. A lot of candidates can meet a lot of voters. I talked to one woman last night who said that uh, she supported Pete Buttigieg because she had seen him twice. Uh, so New Hampshire is uh, kind of make or break for some of these campaigns. I think moving forward, we're looking at the campaigns of, of Joe Biden, of course, who left New Hampshire early yesterday and headed straight to South Carolina, where he believes uh, that state will be his firewall. Uh, we're heading into states that are more diverse, where Democrats say best reflect or better reflect the, the Democratic Party demographics. So we'll see uh, kind of how that happens there. And, you know, we've been talking about Amy Klobuchar all day. She had a really strong night last night coming into third place, uh, really gaining a lot of ground here in New Hampshire. Can she build up the organization needed to compete in states like Nevada and South Carolina, uh, where she hadn't spent uh, as much time as she had in, in a place like Iowa? Uh, that will, this is a turning point in the campaign. Uh, these candidates are refining their pitches and uh, trying to argue that they can stay in it uh, for the long haul. I want to ask you about something that caught our attention. The latest Quinnipiac poll, it shows that support for Joe Biden among African-Americans is dropping. 
by almost half since the Iowa caucuses. He's he still does hold a slight lead among all the other candidates. We know that he ditched the New Hampshire primary to make it to South Carolina. What's his strategy there, Caitlin? And why skip Nevada, which holds its caucuses just a week before South Carolina's primary? Well, the reason that Joe Biden went straight to South Carolina is because that is where his strength lies. He is strong among African-American voters or has been until now. And this is the question we've all been asking over the past few days after his uh, finish in Iowa, which was really low, after this really bad finish, uh, quite frankly, in New Hampshire uh, that caused him to, to kind of skip seeing the results here, uh, raises questions about the viability of his campaign. You know, Joe Biden Biden has been someone who, since the beginning of this race, his theory of the case with that was that he was the most electable candidate. He's been talking about that on the field, uh, on the on the campaign trail. Uh, he believes that he is best posi positioned in that field. But if he's not winning or doing well in Iowa, uh, where if he's not doing w well in New Hampshire, uh, not doing well trying to convert those uh, or do well in those districts and precincts that that he says that he would do well in a general election, um, where does he go moving? forward. And while his base of support has been very strong in these later states, um, do they start to look, do those voters start to look at his standing in the early states and have questions about his electability? Because we know over every policy issue that we've been talking about over the course of this campaign, the issues that Democrats have been debating uh, amongst themselves, the top issue is this issue of electability, finding a candidate that can defeat Donald Trump. So that's the mm. question uh, for him moving forward. But look, these, these campaigns are saying, that there are still 98% of the delegates left to be allocated. There is still a long time to go in this race. Uh, so that's what's kind of fueling a lot of these campaigns heading into this new phase of the, 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 uh, the trail. Caitlin Huey-Burns, thank you very much for joining us, Caitlin.